Now we want to get back into algorithms. So KKD conditions are theory. What are the constraints or the conditions uh, when I know to have an optimum solution? But let's compute something with that. So the primal dual methods, they operate on this uh, Lagrangian that we saw with both the lambda and the mu um, Lagrange multipliers. And they update both the primal variable and the dual variables mu and lambda in a single step. So again, this is an iterative algorithm and uh, we know that we will eventually converge to a solution that solves the KKD conditions. Um, however, the intermediary steps are not necessarily dual feasible. So before we had seen algorithms that are alternating, first optimizing for the X, then optimizing for the lambdas, and uh, here we do everything in one step, and this will have uh, uh, really great consequences for our runtime. Um, so there are actually many primal dual algorithms. Uh, here we'll use a particular one, also from Boyd's book. And uh, what this does is it solves for a modified KKT system. So here we will have a, a modification with an additional term 1 over t added and this plays a role that is similar to the, uh, to, the, to the barrier that we saw in the first interior point method. So here we have this 1 over t and the t will also be increased over time and for very large t we will then return to something that closely approximates the original KKT system. And now we look at the so-called residual. So now we uh, have our KKT system from the previous slide. And uh, for a current solution, uh, the residual describes um, well how close we are to solving this uh, KKT system, this modified KKT system. And uh, what we want to do is uh, or oh, this zero here, well, this is obviously not always the case, but we want to achieve that. So we want to get this residual uh, to get to zero, and uh, we can describe this as the root, as a root finding problem for which we saw the, the Newton method. And uh, so we apply the Newton method, and uh, here we again have the Jacobian of this residual function that we now express in just uh, a single variable z, which contains both the primal and the dual variables. And now we have a, a Newton step that we can do, and uh, you can look how these equations work out. Uh, so this is just the Jacobian now of this r function, and uh, the r, and then also we can think of this decomposed as uh, the dual part. The second one we call the centering part, and the last one is the primal part. <clears throat> what we can do is um, shrink this equation even more um, because we can uh, solve the second equation um, for, for this um, delta mu. So the delta mu is are uh, the, the steps that the Newton equation wants us to take. So the second line in closed form we can solve this for mu and plug it back in and essentially uh, reduce the, the dimensionality of this matrix. And um, well, this is interesting because for the Newton method we have to um, solve for, for, for this matrix and uh, most of the time actually is, is lost in, in, in the step where we have to solve for that or even invert this matrix. Okay, um, but we will not follow this. You can have a look at Boyd, how, how he does this. How he does this. Um, um, so having this Newton step now in place, uh, we are to we are left with a couple of open questions. The first is we have still this t in here. Here is the t, um, and uh, we have to ask ourselves how uh, we should increase the t um, over time. And uh, the second question is how to ensure that we always have uh, this mu u larger uh, or equal to zero, um, because this is also one of the requirements of the KKT system, and this is not included here in the, in the residual term. So this is something that we have to think about separately. 
and uh, the way this is done is in the primal dual algorithm and uh, the important things are the steps that are repeated so here between line 3 and line 9 and everything in between will be explained in in some detail so first of all we would like to always look at the duality gap so the duality gap from the Langorgian dual where we know okay this is the maximum distance that we might still have um, to the to the optimizer and uh, we would like to use this duality gap but we have not access to it uh, because the intermediate steps from the primal dual algorithms are not necessarily feasible but we do have access to what is called the surrogate duality gap uh, which for us is just uh, g of x transpose mu and uh, this would be the duality gap if the solution was feasible so if we had exactly ax minus b equals zero then this would be the duality gap um, um, and uh, actually we will uh, get to a solution where uh, we have ax minus b equals zero and then in the limit the, the surrogate duality gap will be exactly the duality gap and this will also be the stopping condition for when we when we stop the algorithm okay so we compute here the surrogate duality gap eta in the line four next of all we tighten the barrier and we tighten the barrier um, the closer the surrogate duality gaps gets the larger we make the barrier and we have some additional scaling factor here rho this is typically chosen as as 10 but uh, it depends a little bit on the problem so here we are we are updating the t value for for this barrier Okay, then we perform the step update. So then we here perform the Newton step and this gives us um, the, the direction into which we want to step. Yeah. So this would be this guy here. Okay, and then uh, we have an additional special line search. So we cannot use the usual line search uh, because uh, we have to consider in addition that our mu i remains larger than zero and that our g i all remain smaller than zero and therefore we have a special uh, backtracking uh, search step for, for the line search algorithm that takes additional things into consideration. So first of all we look at the mu. Here we have this special uh, notation z um, of mu i and this is actually from our value z this guy here we are extracting the mu i because uh, we have this big vector that also uh, includes our mu um, and uh, so here first of all we look at the maximum multiplier from the line search that is possible that would still um, make our or enable our mu i to be um, larger than zero so here this is the maximum alpha that we can have the maximum multiplier for the for the step and uh, if we are smaller than that this is still okay for our mu. okay and then we take some value that is strictly smaller than this um, than this uh, alpha max and uh, then go on and repeat and uh, reduce the step length until we have uh, the condition that all our gi's are smaller or equal than zero here the, um, the, the way we, we want them uh, or we repeat as long as this condition here as, as long as we don't have uh, um, achieved that the gi's are all smaller than zero and uh, also here we check whether our residual has actually improved so whether our residual has approached the um, the zero vector to to some degree by taking here the 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 two norm the euclidean norm uh, with a distance to the the zero vector okay so here we have then the line search and this is the whole primal dual algorithm we repeat that until we get to a solution that is close enough where both our um, 
uh, for our, both of our primal and for our dual result, um, the residual is um, uh, really close to zero. And uh, also where our eta, so our duality gap is really close to zero. Yeah? So we can choose these uh, epsilons here, we can choose them uh, rather small. And uh, let's see how fast this converges. So what has been done here is uh, some linear optimization problems have been randomly generated with sizes between um, 10, um, 10 inequality constraints and, um, um, and uh, here these are uh, 1000 inequality constraints. So uh, this goes across uh, two orders of magnitude, this, this plot here. And uh, on the other axis, this is the number of iterations required to uh, find the solution to a sufficient degree. And what we see is that for the, the problem where the 10 inequality constraints and 20 variables, so we choose the number of variables double the number of uh, inequality constraints, um, we need, um, well, about 16, 17 iterations. And for 1000 variables, we here need about well, 30, 39 iterations. Uh, so there, are some, uh, there is some standard deviation. So this is obviously when I generate these problems randomly, then um, uh, it might take a little bit more, a little bit less time, but it's more or less stable. And you see that the number of additional iterations of the primal dual method that we need it only grows about logarithmically with the number of uh, variables and constraints in my optimization problem, which is really good. So now I have an, 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 upper, an algorithm that uh, scales well and that also performs somewhat predictably where I can uh, expect uh, results to come back within a certain time frame, which is a big improvement compared to some of the algorithms we coded in Julia prior. Uh, where we didn't yet have access to all this duality theory and uh, where things uh, were a little bit more shaky and it worked well for some of the problems but not so well for others. So in summary, what, learned, what did we learn today? We saw first the Minimax theorem, one of the most important theorems from game theory and uh, how it applies or it can be applied to develop the Lagrangian duality. The Lagrangian duality is a way to rewrite optimization problem in, a sum, in, a, in an equivalent way that uh, gives us access to some additional problem structure that we can exploit by simplifying it, reducing some dimensionality, lower bounding the, the, uh, the solution and so on. Um, then afterwards we looked at uh, ways we can introduce an additional Lagrange multiplier mu specifically for the inequality constraint and uh, how this is used in the KKT conditions to describe um, the, the conditions for which um, I know that optimality has been achieved. And uh, these KKT conditions they need to hold eventually but I can take intermediary steps where um, I, I deviate from, um, from, from feasibility um, and uh, then we saw an algorithm that iteratively reduces the error with respect to the KKT conditions and approaches them and actually showed pretty good um, um, speed uh, for solving convex optimization problems. Um, one of the advantages of this primal dual algorithm is that it updates the primal and the dual variables uh, at the same time in a single step and uh, I don't have to alternate between optimizing the primal and the dual numbers and uh, overall I get a fast algorithm that also has a, a good uh, predictive behavior. That's it for today. Uh, we only had 20 slides for today, but some of them were quite dense. Um, next week we will once more drop into the problems from machine learning. So next week will be about kernel methods and the support vector machine.